Salakia. Yeah, but the man, he's offering you death. So if you want to go ahead and you want to take on his ways and you want to follow him, just know that the, the road that you're going on, you're going towards death. This man is as death. And cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. What is that saying? That's America. That's Babylon. That's the melting pot. Everyone's here. You got every different type of nations here. And he wants to heap everyone unto himself. Why? Because he wants to eat and he wants to be rich from off these other nations. Verse 6. Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. Right. America is not his. It never was. It was to the native Indians. Which they came. They got different agendas towards them. And tried to change their names. A whole lot of African. Uh, was So called African Americans. They are really. Their ancestral goes back. Into the native Indians. A lot of them. They just don't know it. Because the family lost their heritage as well. You got all these, uh, you have the Asians, you have the Arabs. You have all these different nations here. Especially the, uh, the Japan, so-called Japanese, Am Ammonites. These, uh, th that nation there suffered a whole country to get a whole bomb dropped on them. You don't think that they're not going to say nothing at, at one point in time? Don't you think that the, uh, the blacks, the Hispanics, they're going to get tired of it? You got all the people here that you, the uh, Esau that that Esau has placed here in 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 uh, Babylon. It's gonna it, this, the words is gonna speak to him at that time. Verse six again: Shall not all these take up a parable against him, a taunting proverb against him, and say, "Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his"? How long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. Mm. Verse 7 Shall they not rise up suddenly That shall bite thee And awake that shall vex thee And thou shalt be for booties unto them Right Esau don't know what he got He don't know The saint man Man He gonna bite him on He gonna bite himself His words He gonna have to bite it Everything Verse 8 because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. Mm. Because of men's blood and for the violence of the land, of, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. So it's going to come a time and a place when everybody is not going to care about Esau. Everybody's going to hate this man. It's going to be a proverb. It's going to be a reproaching to everyone. It's going to be a taunting proverb. Different parables about him. Man, everyone's going to... Man, Esau's... Man, you're going down. If you're listen, you listening to this, man, you're going down. Let's go ahead and jump up, man. We're going we to get in a little history, too, about some of y'all that maybe people don't really know about. But we're going to go jump to Job 20. Yeah, I think I highlight. We're going to read all the way down to the end. 19 on down. So Job, we're in the book of Job, chapter 20, verse 19. Because he hath oppressed and hath forsaken the poor. Because he hath violently taken away an house which he builded not. He's taken many houses in, in this world, all throughout the earth. And he claimed that it's his. He even claimed, supposedly, so-called claimed the uh, moon, which we already know he didn't make it to the moon. Go do some research on that, and you find out that that's another big lie that he told. Them, NASA, you can't trust the government. You can't trust any of them. Anyone in Babylon, you can't. 20. Surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. 
right? He's not going to feel, he, 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 he's going to be lost for words in that day. He's not going to have any quiet in his, in his mind. He's going to be always thinking what's going to happen to him. He shall not save of that which he desired. He ain't going to be able to save nothing. It's going to be all desolate or someone going to take it away from him. It's going to be a reproach. 21. There shall none of his meat be left. Therefore shall no man look for his goods. So when the destruction comes, it ain't going to be nothing. It's not going to be it's not even going to be a stone stacked on top of another stone. There ain't nobody going to want nothing from Esau. It's nothing that they can give them in that in, especially in that day. He's going to be desolate. He's going to be down going to be just the man the dirt is going to be worth more than him. The dust. We're going to tread on this man. We're going to tread on Esau. Verse 22. And the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. Woo! Verse 23. When is he about to fill his belly? Yahweh shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him. That's right. Jeremiah 51. Revelations. That's, that's them bombs dropping. Let me read 23 again. When he is about to fill his belly, Yahweh shall cast the fury, fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. Woo! Well, I can't remember the scripture off the top of the head right now when it said that uh, they were giving to marriage, eating and drinking, uh, uh, eating and marrying and drinking. I, I, I'm roughly paraphrasing. That's what he's talking about. They're going to be having a good time, and that's when these bombs going to drop on them. They're not going to know what hit them. Verse 24 He shall flee from the iron weapon. Ooh, and the bow of steel shall strike him through. It's going to strike through the body. It's going to demolish Esau and the, you know, and the wicked. 25. It is drawn and cometh out of the body. Yea, the glittering sword cometh out of his gall. Terrors are upon him. Nothing but terrors. 26. All darkness shall be hid in his secret places. So they're going to be trying to get uh, all the different soothsayers at that time. They're going to try to get um, uh, anything, any, uh, fortune tellers, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do they call it? Mediums. All that's going to be darkness. They're not going to get no type of light where they've been getting the light this whole time for them to keep doing their wickedness. It's all going to cease in that day. They ain't going to be able to call up on nothing. So that's why it says, all darkness shall be hid in his secret places. Mm. A fire not blown shall consume him. It, it shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. So anyone that is left out, oh, trust me, fire is coming for him. The rest, it, it, there's not going to be none, none saving them. Nothing but torture and terror at that time. Verse 27. The heaven shall reveal his iniquity. And the earth shall rise up against him. You can see the scriptures are going hand in hand. How is Esau not the white man? How is Esau not the man of, of iniquity? How is he not the son of perdition? How? Job 9.24 uh, roughly paraphrasing. If let, let me go to that in my Bible right quick. Salakia, Salakia. Job nine twenty four. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? That's my question. Who is he? Who is it? Who is it that's doing all of this? Who is it that has the whole earth drunken? It's not the it's not the uh, Asian man. It's not Moab. It's not the Arabs. It's not the Africans. It's this white man and his system, his matrix that he has. That he has everyone so drunken that everyone believes. That is the big delusion. Everything, all of this is a big illusion. 
Verse 27 again. The earth shall reveal his iniquity. We're going to we're going to peel it back. You're going to see it. And the earth shall rise up against him. The earth is going to rise up against him when they find out that this man has been lying the whole time. 28. The increase of his house shall depart and his goods shall flow away in the day of his wrath. He ain't going to have nothing. He's going to be desolate. Verse 29. This is the portion of a wicked man from God, Yahweh, and the heritage appointed unto him by God. That's what's coming to this wicked man. Desolation. That is going to be his heritage. And we're going to jump into that. We're going to jump into that. Because at one time, his heritage, when he was low, he was a base man. So we're going to take it back a little bit to give you some clarification of who this who this man is that the whole earth is drunken because he was he was down at one point. He didn't have anything. So we're going to go to it. Is is it we're going we're going Job 30 and 3. But let me go back to that. Yeah, he he was a base man. They didn't take showers. They, they were just, they were like some base men. They didn't talk right. They didn't have nothing to eat. They ate, they, man, they didn't take, man. <laughs> the story they have about these men, these people, you, you'll be amazed to see them how you see them today and how they walk around and they're so proud. But they're just nothing but base men. They're so vile. That's why you see them, they eat the red meat. They eat meat that's uncooked. They eat, they're just like a beast. They like a beast. They want to have sex with animals. Well, what, what, what other nation on this earth trying to have sex with, with, uh, with, 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 the, with the dog or with the horse or, or whatever type of animal out there? Who wants to be with another man who's trying to throw off nature? And now you got all the earth drunken from off your your, your your nasty, your vile ways. Now you got the people and the, and the children of Israel doing it also. You don't know you have to pay for that. Esau has to pay for that. We're going to go into a little, some of the history. Job 30 and 3. This is, this is in the spirit. For want, so basically for lack. And famine, so no food. They were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in a former time, desolate and waste. This is talking about Esau, verse 4, who cut up mallows by the bushes and, 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 and juniper roots for their meat. They were driven forth from among men. So it's the time when you see them, they, uh, they, uh, I can't remember, um, they were uh, driven into the Caucasus Mountains. They cried after them as after a thief to dwell in the cliffs of the valleys, in the caves of the earth, and in the rocks. So when you go look over there in the Caucasus Mountains, you see a lot of their, uh, some of the civilizations over there, like, uh, I believe, some by like, I ain't going to say Mount Seer, but over there in um, Russia, Georgia, the Caucasus Mountains, this is where a lot of them had resided. Verse 7, among the bushes they braid, under the nettles they were gathered together. Verse 8, they were children of fools, yea, children of base men. They were viler than the earth. They were viler than the earth. That's the thing that sucked. And you see them now and they walk around all proud and they some of them want to be your friend. They think they're going to live on forever and they're not. Psalms 49, 11. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Look at America. Look at Africa. They try to take over certain places and say, this is what we call. We're going to call it this. 
I forgot what they called Jamaica. I believe uh, wood and water. I, uh, um, Puerto Rico, rich, poor. You know, they, they 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 call it after what they want. They even changed the names of the Indians. These these were uh, the northern tribe of the, the Hebrews, and they knew this. But they call them Indians, which meaning what? Savages. This is the the names and the reproach. They, they, they give unto the uh, children of Israel. But they got to pay one day. So let's go to Psalms 10. We can start out 2. Psalms 10 and 2. The wicked in his pride doth uh, persecute the poor. The poor. That's the meek. That's the humble. That's the Israelites. We're the poor. We're at the bottom of society. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. Mm. Verse 3. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. Mm. Verse 4. The wicked through the pride of his... uh, Salah. Verse 4 again. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. Yahweh. Yahweh is not in all his thoughts at all. The reason why it's not in his thoughts is because he don't care about the law. He don't care. He feels that he's able to roam however he roams. He don't have to answer to nobody. That's why you see him and they walk around so proud. These are some vile beast brute men. Verse 5, his ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. Like he don't, man, that's proud. That's proud. That's a lot of pride right there. Verse 6, he have said in his heart, I shall not be moved. He said, nobody ain't going to move me from my spot. No nation is not going to come up against me. I put my name out there. You all seen what y'all have seen what I've done to uh, Japan, Hiroshima. When I dropped the bombs, they know. And all the nations are scared. A lot of them were scared at that time because of that. But now you have a lot of technology, a lot of uh, more science and more, more. Everything has came up because Yahweh has given these other nations the same capabilities to actually destroy this man. But he has one certain group, one certain nation, which is which are the Russians, the uh, the Medes. They're gonna be the one to uh, to finish it off. Verse six. He has said in his heart, "I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity." He don't think that nothing's bad gonna happen to him. He think everything is gonna go smooth as it always been. Since the time of grief, he think that God's really on his side, even though he's not following any of his laws. It's going to take Esau by surprise, man. Esau's not going to know what to do. I'm going to jump to Psalm 64 and 6. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. I can really, really, really go down into that. And that's really letting you know that Esau, whatever he plans. We already know that. They have a lot of things coming for us in the end. The Israelites. They have they they probably planned this back in the time when they took over uh Israel. The Zionists, the Rothschilds, they, they already know this. They already knew everything. They're probably just surprised that we found out that we were the children of Israel. But they knew the prophecies and they knew that it came true. And now that they see that the prophecies coming true, now they're getting scared. So now that you can see, you can see the things are starting to move around the earth now. You can see that the um, uh, times are starting to speed up now. Different prophecies are happening. 
But right now, you can see we're in the time of the rumors of uh, uh, the rumors of wars, and now that the children of Israel are starting to wake up, everything is starting to happen. This is in Matthew 24, the times of the end. Soon you're gonna see nations gonna rise against nations. It's gonna be race wars. Soon that's gonna be happening. And then next, and then you got this soon you're gonna have the mark of the beast and the chip and all implementing martial law, and then they're gonna start coming for after the Israelites. You can see it. You can see it. It's like right there in your face, and the prophecies are happening, but it's going so slow. But it has to wait. We have to wait to certain uh you have to have patience. Because right now, if you don't have patience in this, you're not gonna make it. Even though I see a lot of brothers, they wanted to happen so fast, so fast, but it's still a lot of things that still have to take place. And when it takes place, this is this is when things are really gonna speed up because now things are gonna happen. Prophecies are gonna start coming, and then now it's gonna be nothing but chaos and confusion because a lot of people don't even see the truth, and that's what's it's really gonna catch Esau by surprise. Even though they have a diligent search and they go through everything, they go through the deep things, they still not going to win at the end. Even though they do a diligent search, they we, we, we already know how Esau do. We already know we're not ignorant of his devices. We can see it. We can see that. Let's go ahead and jump to Job and 14. Get ready to wrap up this lesson soon. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Job 14 and 5. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. So the must letting you know the most high is in control of everything. And everything is going according to his plan. So just because we want things to hurry up and rush, it's not time yet. We have to we have to wait on you. We have to wait on the Lord. And he's going to deliver us. We just have to wait. We have to have patience. Because we already know that he's not going to go over a specific time, period. We can already see that this is the last generation. That's going to be able to bring this word out. All the prophets are going to come out. Everyone's going to come back into their to, into their lot. And they're going to rebuke this devil. And this devil has to fall. His kingdom has to fall. And then the wars and everything. All that is going to come through this generation. I don't give it. I, I give it myself. I give it. I'm just saying. Just as a man. 10. I give it not even 10 years. The next 10 years. I don't see it, but I could be wrong. It could be 20, 30 years from now. We don't know. We don't know. No one knows. But how you can see the different prophecies, we are so close. It could be 10 years, but really, I could say 10 years, it can be another year. You understand? So that's why I'm saying you need to get ready. Because saying, let's go to verse 5 again. Seeing his days are determined. And it's only determined by Yahweh. The number of his months are with thee. It's with them. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. He's not going to be able to pass those bounds. And I got a precept for that in in Ezra. Let's see verse 6. Yeah, let's start at six. Second Ezra chapter six and six. Then did I consider these things and they all were made through me alone and through none other. By me also they shall be ended and by none other. So that's the precept of of Job 14 and five. His bounds are set and it's only going to be ended by Yahweh. And it ain't going to be by no one else. Verse 7. Then answered I. So this is Ezra's talking now. Then answered I. And said. What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first. And the beginning of it that followeth. 
until now, it's nothing you know. When this age continues, when this white man goes down, when Esau goes down, now it's letting you know that that's the end of that age. So now it's letting you know it's going to be another age coming that's going to follow it. It has to be a trans, a, 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 not translation, a transliteration. Um, I'm probably saying the wrong word. It has to be a transition. That's the better word. It has to be a transition from one kingdom to another kingdom, which is from the kingdom of Edom to the kingdom of the Israelites, Jacob. Verse eight. I lost my, I lost my space. Verse eight. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. So you can take that account. That's back in Genesis 25. I believe Genesis 25, 25, if I'm, if I'm mistaken. Genesis 25, 25. Yes, I'm correct. And, um... And that, 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 that'll tell you the account of the time when Jacob and Esau w- were born. Okay? So, let's go to verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world. So, when you go into the, in, uh, when you go into the world, it's letting you know that's an uh, aeon. So, that aeon is letting you know that it's an age. So, the age of this, of Esau, is ended in another age of Jacob is going to follow it. So let me read that again. For Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth it. So it's letting you know. Jacob is next. We in line. The Israelites are, are coming back to, to claim the world and have everything done in righteousness. The whole earth is going to, they're not going to be drunken no more of this man's philosophies. It's, everyone's going to have to follow the laws of Yahweh or get put down. You don't want to, if you want to go out there and you want to go sleep with animals, that's death. You die. You want to go out there and commit adultery. You want to go out there and do all these other things and all these other sins out there that's punishable by death. Bye. Cut them. Kill them. But guess who's going to have the power to do that? That's the elect. Yahweh Shah. We're going to rule these nations with the rod of iron and especially Esau. We're going to go ahead and jump to chapter 11. We're going to finish it out here. 39 on down. Second Ezra chapter 11 verse 39. Are not thou it that remainest of the four beasts whom I made to reign in my world, that the end of their times might come through them? Right. Verse 40. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were that were past and had power over the world with great fearfulness. What would I just what was I saying the whole time? And over the whole compass of the earth. With much wicked oppression, and so long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit. That's a cut. That's a cut for a lot of you people out there. That's a cut. Talking about Babylon is is is, is, is not talking about them. It's not talk. It's, it's, that's a really a cut for. Uh, uh, what's the what's the doctrine out there with the the Arab the Arabs Esau's the Arab because of Esau or something like that? Man, it don't even make no sense. When you go into the precepts, it don't make no sense. That's just the bugged out doctrine that people want to believe. And if you believe that, man, yeah, the spirit ain't working with you. It's just not working with you. Forty one, for the earth hast thou not judged with truth. For thou hast afflicted the meek, thou hast hurt the peaceable, thou hast loved the liars, and destroyed the dwellings of them that brought forth fruit, and hast cast down the walls of such as did thee no harm. We not doing no harm to Esau. Man, Jake, only thing Jake want to do, man, we just want to get some money. We want to go and chill. We, man, we not trying, man, we ain't trying to hurt. We not going around. We not beating up, uh, 
um, Edomites out here, man. We man, we can care less, man. They did what they did. We gonna get our time one day, but man, right now while we while while we not in that time, you can look at Jake. Jake is out there. They chilling, but at the same time, they been wicked. They been wicked because they don't know no better. They just destroy. So then you know the Israelites didn't do them no harm. And that's that's just that's just the bottom of the, the line. We are not trying to do Esau no harm, but really right now we got this truth. We trying to do every harm. And when we get our time, it's going to be nothing but harm to them. In the kingdom. Verse 43. Therefore is thy wrongful dealing come up unto the highest, and thy pride unto the mighty. So as then you know, just because of your proud, I mean, uh, it's, ah, it's a lot here. Just because of your pride, and all your wrongful dealings, dealings that you're doing in the earth, all your wicked oppression, all your uh, how you got this different, how you got this matrix system, you taxing people from off their money. Um, you're not paying them the same day. You, you're doing everything against the law. You, you, you're having sex with all these with animals and, and, and homosexual men. You, you're passing laws. You're changing times. It's going to be a time when all that is ended. Why? Because all your wrongful doings is going to Yahweh. He's recording everything you're doing right now. All your thoughts is getting recorded. You don't know what you're doing. You don't even know what you're doing. But you're being deceived, and that's the good thing about it. Because you can make, you're making the kingdom come quicker. The more that you do wicked. The more that you're being wicked. Verse 44. The highest hath also looked upon the proud times. And behold, they are ended, and his abominations are fulfilled. So it's letting you know your abominations are fulfilled right now. He sees it all. The dark web, the market, all that. He sees all that. You're selling people off. When I was in the world, I used to do credit card uh, fraud and all that. I seen what was all going on. People selling children. I seen it. And I seen it as all wickedness. And that's when I started asking questions. What the hell? And then soon, shortly after that, I started coming into this truth. And when I came into this truth, I forsake it all. Because I'm actually helping this man commit fornication against my God, my, my father. Verse 44 again. The highest hath also have looked upon the proud times, and behold, they are ended, and his abominations are fulfilled. Mm. And therefore appear no more, thou eagle, nor thy horrible wings, nor thy wicked feathers, nor thy malicious heads, nor thy hurtful claws, nor all thy vain body. So he's saying everything about this beast. It's finna go down. It's gonna be desolate. You're not gonna be able to see all the things that I've seen before. You wanna have sex with little children that never hit their flower and all that. You you, you, you just it's, you're just a vile person, a vile man that has to be destroyed. You have to be destroyed. Not only you, man, your children, children, man, all y'all just have to go, man. Because y'all just you got something in you. It's just nothing but pride. You have to go down. Verse 46, the last one. That all the earth may be refreshed and may return. The reason why you guys have to go down is just because of this verse right here. That all the earth may be refreshed. How's the earth? How's the earth gonna be refreshed? It's gonna be refreshed through the Israelites, the uh, the the um, the elect, and Yahweh shot. We're gonna rule the nations with the with the uh, rod of iron. They're gonna we're gonna push the laws. Anyone that's not trying to do the law, they're getting put to death. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put fear in everyone that they're gonna have to follow. And if they don't want to follow, man, they can get down. They can, they have to get down with the program. Uh, 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 get laid down. Simple as that. 
That's the only way the earth is going to return to how it was in the beginning. Ain't no more out there eating that damn pork, man. The pork is done. So vile animal, man. That's the, that's the animal that, clen- that cleanses the earth. It eats anything. Verse 46 again. That all the earth may be refreshed and may return, being delivered from thy violence, and that she may hope for the judgment and the mercy of him that made her. So right now, not only are the Israelites uh, suffering, the earth is suffering, the trees are suffering, the water, the fish, the animals. The whole earth is punishing because of this, because of Esau. So therefore, in order for the earth to get refreshed all over again, Esau has to be made desolate. So in all, I hope you guys were edified. You guys got to see how the how the earth was drunken. You got to see a little bit where these people come from and how they shouldn't be over you at all. And the only way to get the earth refreshed all over again is that the Israelites, the really the, the, the elect, they have to wake up. Not only do they have to wake up, they have to wake up and we have to push this word. We have to get it out there. Because there's no way none of this wickedness should be going on. And if you really look at it, it's like it was all our fault. But really, if you look at it in the spirit, it was made and it was destined to go that way. Just so we can see the outcome just because now we can see that we can see the uh, bad and therefore we're going to see the good and we're going to stay good because we're going to know is this is nothing but a big illusion. And that this big illusion is going to seem like a bad, it's going to be like a bad nightmare. And I can't wait for it to end. I can't wait for it to end. So at all, to all the brothers out there, keep pushing the truth and sincerity. Shalom.